Crypto Ryzen is, we know it's good, but is it smooth? Is it smoother than Bud Light? <laughs> so a lot of people have been reporting that Ryzen, even though it doesn't win at all the gaming benchmarks, it's just better. It just feels better, man. And so how do you test that? We were thinking about, hmm, you know, what? how can we judge if it's smooth or not? You can run all the benchmarks and the benchmarks can be all over the road that, you know, some games will go with Intel, some games will go with Ryzen. So we decided let's actually try to play the games. And so we decided to do a double blind experiment four systems and we had no idea we used a kvm to switch the system with that with the person filming and the person playing having no idea which system had been set up the other person out in the hall waiting and so we just going to play them and decide is this a smoother experience which one is better is do we have a better experience with one of these machines than the other ignoring all of the benchmarks and all the other stuff <laughs> the purely subjective test because our numbers were failing us. It's like, this is a pretty good experience. This is, you know, something really amazing. Now we've got four different games we're gonna test. We're gonna be testing Overwatch, a personal favorite of mine, Doom. Uh, both of those are pretty well optimized. And then we're also doing GTA V, an older game, and Fallout 4, which is newer, but also kind of on the unoptimized side. Now we, we did have to sort of borrow a lot of hardware to be able to pull this off. Uh, you guys may have seen the build video in, in the Deep Cool Steam Castle that we did. Uh, we added an OCZ um, RD400 NVMe to that for game storage and benchmarks and, and that sort of thing. We actually ended up uh, with four pretty high-end systems. Um, there were two Intel systems and two Ryzen systems. Uh, the first Intel system was a 5960X. That's a thousand dollar CPU. Well, it was a thousand dollar CPU. It's the previous generation. It's a little bit slower than the 6900K, I think, just a hair, but it was overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz on all eight cores. Uh, it had uh, dual channel memory, dual channel uh, two sticks of um, DDR4 3200 memory. Uh, everything in the in all four systems basically was the G Skill Trident Z 1616-1634 timing memory kit running at DDR4 3200 across the board. I didn't want to run quad channel memory on the 5960X. That might've helped it just, just a little bit, but uh, we didn't have enough G skill memory to do that. So um, uh, we also used NVMe in all four systems. Although one Intel system and one Ryzen system had the, the Toshiba uh, OCZ RD400. The other uh, Ryzen system and the other Intel system had uh, an Intel 1.2 terabyte uh, PCI Express NVMe. So. The 5960X got a PCI Express Intel NVMe. Uh, we were using a GTX 1080 in all four systems, not a 1080 Ti or anything like that, just straight up GTX 1080, because 1080 Ti's are kind of hard to get your hands on right now, and the 1080's are on sale, so eh, it, it works out. Um, all four systems had 16 gigabytes of RAM, so that's good. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I mean, they were pretty much the same across the board. Oh, the Ryzen systems, uh, Ryzen 1800X, clocked at 4.1 gigahertz, all cores. The Ryzen 1700X was at stock on everything except both systems were running their memory at DDR4 3200 because that helps with the Ryzen Infinity Fabric stuff. We also had the i7 7700K, DDR4 3200, again, running at 4.5 gigahertz on all four cores. So yeah, let's hop into benchmarking them. So, after playing everything on all four systems, Doom and Overwatch, uh, we kind of figured out early on that they're really well optimized. There's hardly any difference at all. It's really difficult to tell any difference on any of these systems. They all play great at both resolutions. Now with Fallout, uh, Fallout was probably the worst performing game in all of them, but it was pretty much across the board the same except for System 3. I had some really bad uh, hiccups and glitching in the 4K Fallout playthrough. and it was nothing that would ruin your enjoyment of the game, but it was noticeable, and it was noticeably absent in the other systems. And GTA System 1 was noticeably bad. There was a lot of hanging up, and it actually affected the gameplay at one point. Minor, I, 
Would it stop me from playing GTA? Probably not. But compared to the other systems, it was noticeably different. Other than that, it's kind of what we expected. We were able to tell very little difference. The whole idea of the systems being better, noticeably smoother, was not really the case. They all were pretty much the same. After playing on all four, I thought that it was pretty much the same. Like it was really hard to tell a difference. Um, there was a little bit of stuttering, I think on, I think it was number three. Um, and that was in Fallout as you went around uh, the stairwell, you kind of felt like there was a few hitches here and there, but it wasn't too terrible. And it was like that one section was the only place I noticed it. Uh, the stairwell I'm talking about is like the one at the top of the Corvega plant. Overwatch and Doom were pretty much the same. They're both really well optimized. I didn't notice anything major in any of those. It played very smoothly. Overwatch was a dream. Doom was a dream. Both very, very smooth, good uh, setups on those. GTA was fine on all of them. Um, I noticed on System 2, uh, when I was playing GTA, I had like a moment where the bridge seemed to kind of like come in for like a split second, but that was the only thing I noticed. And I was really looking for that. I was really trying to look at things in the distance and see, you know, is th are things drawing in over time? And that was the only thing I noticed. And you really would have had to been looking for it. So honestly, like in terms of how I was driving and how the game was playing, it was really smooth. <laughs> oh, it's so hard. It's so, uh, yeah, it was basically impossible to tell the difference from any of the games on these systems. The sampling is pretty good. Overall, I mean, Fallout 4, super unoptimized game. It's terrible. GTA 5, it's old, super unoptimized. DirectX 11, it's terrible. Doom, Vulcan, no discernible difference at 1080p or 4K. Even running an 85 hertz overclock on the monitor, you can't really tell. Maybe we could tell something at 144 hertz. I don't have a super high resolution 144 hertz monitor to tell. We do have the one 1080 monitor. Eh, like maybe it's gonna be a different video. The results kind of are a wash because, you know, when I was doing the playthrough, there were a couple of times that GTA would hitch on like System 1 or System 3, but it was not really anything uh, unexpected from GTA. I mean, you can have the best system in the world. You can be running GTA from a RAM drive and it'll still hitch and be weird. So I don't know that that's really, that's really a, a clear result. Overall, I really couldn't tell a difference between the systems that we were playing on. So uh, let's do an inventory of which system is which. All right, the gaming has been done in five minute increments. We had no idea. And now for the first time, along with you, we will discover what we were playing on. Oh, oh my. <laughs> All right, so the first system was a 5960X. That's the, uh, you know, the, the lovely fractal case. Then we've got a Ryzen system, the 1800X system running at 4.1 gigahertz. Then we've got our i7 7700K. And then we've got our other Ryzen system, our 1700X, system four. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Well, the clear verdict though, is that there's not really much of a difference, real world, between these four systems on these four games. There were tiny, Individually, we experienced some less than stellar performance in some games. Uh, I know, uh, the, I think GTA on the Xeon wasn't great, but overall, I, there's so many variables at play there because the other two didn't necessarily have such a bad time with that. It's hard to say that one is better than the other. Yeah, we all recorded data points of, of hitches and weird stuff for all four systems. Uh, with the games. Honestly, Overwatch and Doom were the smoothest. Fallout 4 and GTA 5 were the roughest. Subjectively, though, there really wasn't a lot of difference. And keep in mind that, you know, for some of the testing, we're running the monitor at 85 hertz. We're going between 1080p and 4K. Uh, and even with the 1080, you know, I was able to keep up with this. Now, we did turn off anti-aliasing and some other stuff like that, so we would get those crazy high frame rates at 1080p. But, you know, the monitor that we were using maxes out at 85 hertz. So, Maybe we would have a different experience at, you know, even higher testing. Not, not really sure, but subjectively, it was very hard to tell any difference at all between all four of the systems. And we were looking hard. 
<laughs> Half the time I was just like rolling off the road in GTA because I was trying to like look at stuff in the distance as I drove closer to it. Like, are we getting, are we getting pop in? You know what's yeah. going on with this? But these are really top end systems. I mean, all four of them have NVMe. All four, of them, uh, uh, they're all running at DDR4 3200, and the DDR4 3200 is is perhaps a bit more important with Ryzen. We've seen in some benchmarks where, uh, you know, the minimum frame rates drop out. Now, interestingly. Um, we did also, you know, we took the opportunity to do some artificial benchmarking as well. When I set up the systems before we started doing the double blind stuff, uh, I also did benchmarking with games like Rise of the Tomb Raider. And so we have some data on that, but it's really not a lot of clear separation for that either. And actually, uh, there's a zip file that has that data. So if you want to look at that, the raw data uh, for DirectX 11 and 12, also tested a Fury card because we had it set up and we thought, why not? But there wasn't really a lot of interesting stuff that we caught in the data. Of course, we don't have a staff of 37 people that are working on this seven days a week because it's frankly not that big of a deal. There's not really a lot of difference here. There's not, it doesn't merit somebody getting their PhD thesis in the which, differences between the systems. Yeah, which game has, you know, 20 more FPS when you're dealing with something beyond 150 FPS. I, I don't know how else to explain it, but the experience is. It, like you guys, would you guys say that gaming on all of these systems was like none of them was a bad experience? Yeah, yeah, it was totally fine. It was fine. So if gaming is what's still holding you up about making a decision between whichever you're going with, Intel or AMD, it really, really doesn't seem to make that big of a difference. Now, if you absolutely want to have the in most insane frame rate and you have a ridiculous monitor then maybe, you know, the 7700K, 4.5 gigahertz plus would be good, at least in the artificial benchmarks. I mean, it's still, even with all the optimizations and everything that we could do on Ryzen, the 7700K is still edging out uh, the machine, but, you know, the 7700K also has less headroom. The Ryzen systems have more CPU power for future use or more CPU power for background tasks. But again, there was no bad experience here. So yeah. There's our benchmarks. I don't know what to tell you. It's just, it's not, you know, it's not the most definitive thing in the world. Like it's it's what we expected, but it's the least interesting answer. <laughs> We're sorry. <laughs> it's the least dramatic answer. It's like, oh no, I need drama. I need you know, I need to win. It's like, no, no. It, it's the differences for you know the 7700K um, it, in gaming. You know, the Ryzen 7 systems are so much better for productivity. You know, they're a clear winner there, but as as much as the win for the Ryzen system is in productivity, the win for the Intel system is nowhere near as much. It's nowhere near as much margin. So if you're looking at an inexpensive game, maybe the Ryzen 5 CPUs would be a good choice because it's going to be cheaper than 7700K. If strictly all you're after is gaming, Ryzen 7, you know, you should probably not, probably Ryzen 5 is what you want. If you want a Ryzen system. But yeah, it's up to you. It works either way. Anything else? See you on the forums. Yeah. Have a good one. Yeah, I mean. That's all we've got. Yeah, that's there, all we got. There's, there's no excitement. The, yeah, that's all we've got. There is no there's, excitement there's no here. Hooks. This is the anti-climax. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next video, though. All those unsubs incoming. Like, we tried, favorite, and subscribe. We tried everything. Like, we tried to quantify every little thing, and there's just, honestly, the differences are really kind, they're kind of academic. But seriously. <laughs> yeah, you should totally like and share, I guess. Thanks. See you guys. Bye.